Hello. Hello. Hey man, how's it going? How are you? All is well. All good. Thank you. Should we start immediately? Not waste your uh, time. Sure. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm not a matter of time wasting, but I don't have much time, so <laughs> I want to make sure I answer yeah. questions. Okay. Uh, hello, Ian. Thank you for speaking for Montenegrin Podcast Rewinding. Happy to speak to you. First, I want to ask you, uh, what's happening currently with Discord Records and do you and how you signed the new band? Uh, <clears throat> Discord is an unusual operation. We don't really sign bands, um, but we put out some new records now and then. Uh, Discord since the beginning has only put out DC area bands. That's sort of been the mission. So the most recent releases, uh, uh, a band called Hammered Holes. Mm -hmm. My brother sings for that band. Um, and then the band Soul Side are putting out a new record on Discord. We don't put out a lot of new releases. Mm. We're not we're not really set up in a way. Um, we don't operate like a regular label. We don't promote things in yeah. the way that most labels do. So we we're more of a historical label at this point, I think. But you know, it's we, we're busy always. Yeah, but speaking in that way, do you think that there are not many good new bands today? No, well, I think there's plenty of good bands. It's just that there's a um, the philosophy I've always philosophy that I have always had with um the label's work is that <clears throat> that we are a documentary label so we so we don't i think the general thinking is that you put out a record for a band try to, to help them make things happen but my point of view is that bands should make things happen with their music and then we put out a record we document mm -hmm. something we take advantage of the fact they've made something happen. Um, so I've always thought about um, the releases as reflecting maybe something that's happening in Washington to say, okay, here's what's happening in Washington right now. Mm. Um, there are plenty of new bands here in Washington who are good, um, but they're, they, they're not, they haven't generated a lot of interest. Like they don't have, you know, they might play a show and 30 yeah. people might come maybe. They haven't gotten into something. They haven't developed a scene or they haven't got something mm. going on. Keep in mind that Fugazi played for a year before we put out our first record. Yeah. So our idea was just to make music that people had to see. Right. And then we right. made a record later on. Yeah. And when we're speaking, that's my next question to you. Uh, when we're speaking about DIY concept today, uh, a lot of bands who says they are DIY earns a lot of money. And uh, where we draw the line between DIY and classical music business? I think DIY, there, I think your question is a little more complicated. DIY, I guess, stands for do it yourself. And if bands are not doing it for themselves and they're not really DIY, in that case, mm. they're using the terminology um they're using the terminology to try to uh, sort of give a sense of who they are as a genre. Um, maybe they're showing a sense of commitment to the idea of independent music. Um, mm. I don't think there's a, a rule. I mean, Fugazi, for instance, was genuinely DIY. Like we ran, like I booked the shows. We did all the driving. We carried all the gear in. We did all the work ourselves. Um, we also made a lot of money. You know, you know, we made, you yeah. know, we all, I mean, all four members have houses. We bought houses. So we're not, you know, obviously. Yeah. So you can't say that the money somehow undermines mm -hmm. um, the, uh, undermines the legitimacy or validity of the ban. Um, I don't know. I don't really, I guess I don't really care, honestly, right. about right. whether bands call themselves DIY or or how they manage your business. It doesn't really matter. In terms of Discord, we're not going to work with bands who have managers and tour mm -hmm. agents, all that stuff, because they are 
they're interested in working in the music industry, they they've accepted an idea that the industry has promoted, but Discord doesn't operate like that. So yeah. you know, I'm not gonna. But that I really feel like when a band is that um, ambitious, then I think they should just go ahead and jump into the the you know the regular record industry. But we're a weird small label compared. Right. Right. And we are uh, a long time uh, in internet era. Uh, what do you think about uh, freedom of speech and political correctness on the other way today? Um, I don't know. I don't really understand your question. I don't think I think about either one of those things. I just do the work I do. So I don't think about like... I mean, is there something specific you're referring to? I don't uh, understand. Uh, uh, in music, generally. Well, what is the issue? What is I don't understand what you're asking me. Uh, because do you think there's a, a freedom of speech in music today? Do you think that artists are free to uh, speech about any issue they want? Yes. I do. Okay. <laughs> I think, okay. I mean, I think that maybe what you're asking me is there I mean, any? I suppose there's there's made there's some labels that, um, for instance, I'm not going to put out a record that advocates shooting people. Mm. I don't believe in guns and I don't believe in violence. And I'm not going to put out a record that advocates murder. That's not something I'm interested in. I also wouldn't put out a record that advocates the abuse of women, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, the band, if a band wants to sing about that stuff, they can certainly do it. But as a label, I can certainly not put it out. Freedom of speech, right? Um, but I don't know. Understand? I don't really know what other scenario. At least in America, the government, there isn't any laws that I'm aware of that um, are t is t are telling bands they can't sing about things. I think bands make that decision for themselves. And I suppose in some cases, labels may, you know, may not agree with something and say, well, we're not going to put that out. I certainly, as I said, you know, if you were in a band mm. and you advocated, you know, sh shooting children in school, I'd say, I'm not going to put that record out. Yeah, right. Uh, Minor Threat and Fugazi, two very influential bands. Uh, how do you feel about that legacy? What does it mean to you today? And how I don't I don't think yeah. about how I feel or what things mean. I just do my work. Mm. Like, like I literally work every day. I just do the work. And you know, music kicked my ass when I was a kid. It changed my world. And I thought I will try to return that favor. So when mm. people say to me, Wow, Minor Threat really changed my life. I always think, well, you change your life, but I'm glad that mm. Minor Threat was able to give you some soundtrack. Mm. You know, that's the reality. Like, I don't, like, I can say that band, there are bands that I loved that had a profound impact on me and they inspired me, but I can't say they changed my life. Um, I changed my life, but they gave me the soundtrack. Um, but in terms of how I feel or was it like to be, a hero or a, a, I don't give a fuck about any of that. I just do my work. I do. Yeah. the. I just work what's in front of me. Like right now I'm doing this 20 minutes ago. I had a visitor who wanted to see the archives. I did another interview before that. Before that, I was packing up a record to ship. I feel you know, every day I work. I just work and work. Mm. And I don't, yeah. I don't really spend a lot of time. People often ask me like, what does it feel like? But I don't know. What is it? I, I don't know what it, I'm only myself and I don't know what it would mm. feel like to not be me. Yeah. So I yeah. can't really compare it or describe it. Right. It's weird sometimes. It's a little weird sometimes when you're, you know, if I'm with my son, you know, maybe when my kid was like four or something and we're in a playground or I'm in the zoo or with him or something and somebody walks up and just starts talking to me about really heavy stuff. I'm like, I'm, here with my son you know it's yeah. it can be a little peculiar a little strange but yeah. that's all right you know i like but I, but I don't think anyone who started bands thinks that that bands should be or will be important time proves that 
those two bands are very important in especially punk rock music in so i ask you in those yeah. terms yeah i understand but it's but yeah. i yeah yeah you know for my i mean i was in the band so i don't know it's hard for yeah. me to discuss <laughs> right right and punk rock today in general uh what do you think uh what's the punk rock role in roles today especially in in culture my definition of punk rock is the free space mm -hmm. and what i mean by that is that it's not particularly necessarily a sound or a style or a look or even an attitude but rather it's a place where new ideas can be presented um with an audience for a new idea um because it's not based on profit or making money um if you have a, a venue uh where bands play and let's say it's a bar which most of them are mm. bars yeah um, the venue to stay open needs a clientele they need people to buy what they're selling um so if you're a band that has a new idea um you don't have an audience because it hasn't the idea hasn't been thought of yet mm. so you don't so if you are a band with no audience that means no clientele for the bar so those venues do not really serve the new idea but punk rock from in my mind my relationship with punk rock was it it was this idea that we just wanted to see people come up with new things and mm. we're here to check it out um so the audience was interested in the new idea so punk is has always been with us in one form or another and i think it always will be with us in one form or another um if someone is focused on orthodoxy and they say well punk is this and yeah. they define it yeah well that punk will probably come to an end and yeah. um that punk probably will um maybe no longer have any relevance in the world at some point. But if, but if you think of punk as I do, as something that is responsive and living and even able to change its name, then you know the punk will never die because it yeah. is responding to the circumstances in, in which it exists. So I feel like that while you and I are discussing punk in these terms, probably somewhere in the world right now, there are people, probably young people who have a vision and they're pursuing it. And that's punk. Yeah. And have you ever considered to write a book, some kind of memoirs? Um, people have asked me many times about that. Uh, the answer is <clears throat> I've thought about it, but I've never, it's never been something I, um, I've never found a method or an approach that struck me as worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, I like to tell stories, but I'm a little sick of men in their 60s telling their story. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, so the answer to your question is I, people have asked me about it, but I've never really, it's never something I've done. I've taken I've never come up with an approach that felt worthwhile. That's my answer. Yeah. And when we speaking about men in 60s, what do you think about reunions of the bands? Um, there can be strange sometimes. I feel like everybody has to make their own choices mm. about how what's but I don't know their circumstances. I've seen some of the bands and a lot of them are, are it's very enjoyable to hear the music and um, interesting to see the way that they're playing now as they've gotten older. Uh, I don't, I'm not a nostalgic person, mm -hmm. so I don't have a sense of nostalgia. Um, bands that do it for the money, I find uninteresting. Yeah. I, do, I don't care about that, but yeah. I'm not the I'm not the intended tar I'm the audience. I'm not the people there's mm. you know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, not even born when those bands are playing and they want to stare and in seeing whatever form they're in. So I don't I can't argue with that. Um 
But it's not for me, I don't think. Yeah. Like and the idea of the- like Myron Threat will never play a show and been offered an awful lot of money to do it. Mm. Um but the idea of getting on stage and doing songs that I wrote when I was eighteen years old seems insane to me. To yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And the last question I got for you is what's happening with the events? Do you playing shows? Well, Amy and I sort of stopped playing the Evens in 2014. Um, and then we started um, for a number of years. We we practiced with Joe Lally from Fugazi. Mm-hmm. And we had a new band called Kariki. It's spelled C-O-R-I-K-Y. Mm-hmm. Um, and we actually played some shows in February and March of 2020. And then the pandemic hit. Yeah, We released an album the summer of 2020. But we've never returned to the stage. And at the moment, we're actually on a break again um, because everybody's just busy. We did practice throughout the entire uh, pandemic. We got together and played music every week. Um, But there's nothing. So, but, you know, the events, that might be something that Amy and I will do again. You know, Mm. we have a 14-year-old son. So at the moment, we're we're doing that. Uh, It's entirely possible we're, we'll return with some even stuff it's also possible that curriculum will do stuff um yeah. it's also possible that nothing will happen i don't know i mean i'm yeah. my life is is no shortage of things to do i can tell you that you know right. i'm constantly busy and i have too much to do every day that i want to do and that's a gift that's great yeah that's great also gift is to me to have a chance to speak with you all the best to you and your family and hope to see you playing with some bands. And Yeah, get, someday. Get to, I've never been yeah. to Montenegro. I'd love to come yeah. there. I've never been. So, And get uh, to rest sometimes. I know. I've never, that's, <laughs> I'm, not a good, I'm not good with vacation. I yeah. just work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not mad about it. And uh, as I said, I still, I loved, I loved, you know, I like doing interviews. I like, yeah. Um, the hardest problem I have is email is hard. Right. I get, you know, I have thousands of emails and it's hard. It's a lot, lot of yeah. work. Um, but I do think ultimately that my relationship with music, the reason I played music was because I wanted to be with people. Mm. I wanted to have a conversation. And I feel I'm very grateful for the fact that um, I have had so many conversations and the conversations continue. Um, and even that through this bizarre right. method, they, I'm talking to somebody so far away in such yeah. a different circumstance and I feel grateful for it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much again and hope you to, to see you in, in Europe soon. Um, me too. I hope so. If you come Please. to Washington, let me know. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.